The three for me only at Chili's serves up bottomless drinks, bottomless chips and salsa, and a classic old timer with cheese and fries for just $10.99. Hey, it's three for me, not three for us. It's my $10.99, it's my three for me. Hey, uh-uh, get out of here. Nope, ooh, I can whack hands all day. This Chili's three for me is the best $10.99 you can eat. I'm Greg, I'm 68 years old. I do motivational speaking in addition to the substitute teaching. I honestly feel that that's my calling to give back to younger people. I think most adults will start realizing that they don't recall things as quickly as they used to or they don't remember things as vividly uh, as they once did. I've been taking Prevagen for about three years now. People say to me periodically, man, you got a memory like an elephant. It's really, really helped me tremendously. Prevagen, at stores everywhere without a prescription. Another college basketball season is upon us, and tonight we raise the curtain on one of basketball's most iconic venues. It's year two for John Shire, and his number two Blue Devils are hosting Division II UNC Pembroke in their final preseason tune-up. Welcome to Cameron Indoor Stadium. I'm Chris Edwards. Great to be with Debbie Taylor and delighted to have you with us. Debbie, a lot for the Blue Devil fans to be excited about. Nearly 80% of Duke's scoring is back from a year ago. The Blue Devils also have another top two recruiting class nationally. No reason and no wonder the Blue Devils are the preseason favorites in the ACC. Well, and John Shire, the first to lead an ACC team to a title as a coach and a player, returns four starters and four players with 30 plus starts, including ACC preseason player of the year, Kyle Filipowski. As a freshman, Flip led the Blue Devils in scoring and rebounding, posting 16 double-doubles, earning himself ACC Rookie of the Year and ACC Tournament MVP honors. It appears that Blue Devil fans will have a lot to look forward to this season, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. And Filipowski, Deb, a, up 18 pounds from last year, a lot stronger. This is a Duke team that feels like they've got all the pieces for a really special season, and it begins here tonight at home against a really good team out of the Division II ranks. But the Blue Devils, Decided to play somebody besides themselves. Definitely. Long preseason practice. Each team having an opportunity to play a close scrimmage and looking forward to it. a different opponent. Sick of looking at their teammates. Filipowski to jump center for the Blue Devils. Cobb will oppose for the Braves. It's great to have you with us from Cameron Indoor Stadium tonight. Off we go. And the opening possession to the Blue Devils. And I think Blue Devil fans are excited to get a first look at this very talented and touted freshman class, as you said, ranked number two in the country. And an early turnover there and a reach-in foul against the Blue Devils. Actually, I beg your pardon, it be a reach-in foul against UNC Pembroke, Nigel Verdeer. These are the little things you clean up in the beginning of the season, just the timing and the coordination on that handoff, closing the space, putting the ball in your partner's stomach, making sure the defense can't get a hand on it. But UNC Pembroke, they pride themselves on their defense and their rebounding, one of the best rebounding teams at the Division II level in the country. Yeah, they were second nationally in rebounding a year ago. This is very much a throwback old-school basketball team that Coach Richards has at UNC Pembroke. And they're getting a stern test tonight. Proctor... And a foul away from the ball. Bill Covington Jr., Les Jones, and Isaac Barnett are the three with the whistles tonight. And two quick fouls on Verdeer. I really like talking to Coach Drew Richards yesterday. His team comes into Cameron. Not a single player on the team or a single coach has ever been in Cameron, and they are excited and feel blessed to be here. I thought that was so kind of him to say that, but they're really looking forward to this matchup and just being here in the Temple of College Basketball. 15 to shoot, lengthy opening possession for the Blue Devils. It's Proctor for three, and the first points of the night. How smooth of a stroke for the Australian Tyrese Proctor, the sophomore, getting that year of experience under his belt. Had a great summer. I like the new hair look, too. <laughs> Preseason second team all ACC for Proctor on this club pick to win the league this season. First offensive touch, Cobb couldn't answer. Filipowski pulls down the board. Duke wants to play fast on offense this year. Blue Devils quickly in transition. McCain makes it 5 0. There's the first bucket for the 6 3 freshman from Sacramento in Cameron. 
He's the number one player coming out of California. Gatorade Player of the Year is junior and senior year, and he has got Coach Shire really excited with his toughness, his maturity, and just, just how mentally strong he is. Look at Proctor trying for another one. Another deep rebound. This is Cobb. UNC Pembroke really excited about this team. Another veteran team, Debbie. We talked about how this Pembroke team prides themselves on defensive and rebounding, but they returned four starters and six of their top eight from a team that was really good a year ago. Yeah, 26 and four last season, regular season champion, back-to-back -back NCAA tournaments for them. Coach Drew Richards really has his team looking good and, and a lot of returners, a lot of experience, really similar to Duke. The Braves 53 and eight over their last two years, trailing by three early. Mark Mitchell with his first touch. Mitchell to Proctor in the corner for his second three. Nice isolation for Mark Mitchell. He draws the defense. You cannot leave Tyrese Proctor open in the corner. Such a good shooter. Knocked away, and it'll belong to the Blue Devils. We talked about how Duke wants to be faster on offense. How about this half-court look for Mitchell? A nice find. See how he just draws two defenders, finds his teammate. Proctor's got his feet set, catch and shoot. Beautiful basketball. Mitchell, another guy who the Blue Devils feel like are going to take another huge step this year for Coach Shire's club. He's such a great on-ball defender. Does so many little things for his team. Filipowski held underneath, and that's where some of the size for the Blue Devils is going to be on display tonight. Amari Miller called for his first foul. And Amari Miller at 6'7", the sophomore from White Plains. He's got the task of guarding the ACC preseason player of the year, one of the best in the country at seven feet. Kyle Filipowski, that is a tough order. Proctor from the corner for his third triple of the first half. It's one of the first things you learn in basketball. The most likely person to score on an inbounds play is the inbounder. Great kick back to Proctor and another smooth stroke for his third bucket already of the contest. He has nine of Duke's first 11 points. And the Blue Devils with the early advantage. Knocked away. Mitchell with the steal. Filipowski and the Blue Devils in transition. Proctor with a heat check. From way long range, Tyrese, the sophomore, lighting it up. My name's Dan, I live here in San Antonio, Texas. My wife Magda and I have been married for 39 years. About three or four years ago, I wasn't feeling as if I was as sharp as I used to be. I wanted to try something that was over the counter. I saw the Prevagen commercials. After a short amount of time taking Prevagen, I started noticing a difference, that I'm remembering this and remembering that. I stopped taking Prevagen and I found myself slacking back, so I jumped right back on it. I feel as if it's brought me back to the good old days. Prevagen, at stores everywhere without a prescription. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, it's checked by experts. Every stitch, tag, and logo. So you'll always get that feeling of real. in the midst of a 9-0 run, and it's been the Tyrese Proctor show early, Debbie. 12 of Duke's first 14 points on four made threes for the sophomore from down under. He got a lot of playing time his freshman year, and it was a bumpy road for him early in his career, but Coach Shire left him out there, and he let him play, and he believed in him, and he stuck with him through thick and thin, and by the time the end of the season came around, Tyrese Proctor was playing his basketball, best basketball, and with another summer of maturity on him, wow. ACC All-Freshman Team selection a year ago. We mentioned the preseason second team All-ACC this year. What a great backcourt the Blue Devils have with Proctor and senior Jeremy Roach, who's been a staple for the Blue Devils for four years. Finished the season so strong last year. 
two of their captains this season along with graduate student Ryan Young. Really veteran Duke club. We say that in jest knowing how many sophomores the Blue Devils had. A fall away wouldn't go and Mitchell pulls down the rebound. You just see how difficult it is for UNCP to even get a shot up. It's that Blue Devil defense that's just so stellar. Great block shot there. Here come the Braves on the break. It's Gardner trying to go coast to coast and the finish. Gardner's got all four points for the Braves as the foul on Roach. Coach Richard has to like that. Stop the bleeding a little bit. Get out and transition. Braves like to run. Proctor tries to take the charge. Gardner powers through, finishes with the N1 and a chance to make the three-point play. Got the free throw as well. It's going to be interesting to see how many charges are called this year. That was more of a point of emphasis, the block charge heading into this season. So we'll see if that impacts the Blue Devils and how they play defensively this season. I feel like it's a block, a point of emphasis every season. <laughs> yes, agreed. <laughs> it's such a tough call. Filipowski with a little isolation on the low black. Ball's blocked, ball's tipped away. And Mitchell is fouled. Cobb picks up his first. Now this is a, a UNCP team that we talked about. A lot of expectations based on what they had a year ago. And Coach Richard says, you know, it's a lot different for this Pembroke team. They're not going to sneak up on anybody. They're going to get everyone's best shot on a night-in, night-out basis. They are, and they have a tough conference, and that's why he wanted – they went out and played out at oh, uh, Houston last Houston, week. Yeah. Houston, last week. And, and here in Cameron tonight and playing a pretty tough schedule to start the season, he wants to see what his team's made of early. Nice hand for Ryan Young, who's in for the first time tonight for the Blue Devils. Also, Caleb Foster seeing his first action as a Blue Devil as Mitchell gets them both. But Coach Shire really complimentary of his two freshman guards in McCain and Foster. Talked about how mature they are both m mentally and physically. He said they're just ultra serious. When they step on the court, a light switch goes on, and they are there to play and get their job done. Miller with a little baby hook. And right on cue, one of the veterans on this team, Ryan Young, the rebound. Proctor's had a great start. And it's out of bounds. It'll stay with the Blue Devils as Proctor thought he might have got fouled there. But we take a break. It's the Blue Devils out to the early lead in this exhibition game. Stay with us. More in a moment on ACC Network Extra. I'm Sherry. And I'm John. I'm a pharmacist. As we were starting to age, it's like, well, how can we help our cognitive abilities? We saw Prevagen. I did read the clinical study and went ahead and gave it a try. I feel that Prevagen is helping me with uh, overall clarity. And as a pharmacist, I've recommended it to not only just customers, but also to friends and family as a product to try. Prevagen, at stores everywhere without a prescription. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, it's checked by experts. Every stitch, tag, and logo. So you'll always get that feeling of real. Blue Devils out to the big lead, but a really great program that Coach Richards is building at UNC Pembroke coming off a phenomenal season a year ago, as you mentioned earlier, Debbie. Back-to-back -back NCAA tournament appearances for the Braves. He just has a great head coaching career. Only been a head coach five years, but one year at Lander University. <laughs> had them winning most conference games in school history. Came back to UNC Pembroke, where he was a former assistant, and he's just 79-19 and 19 in his head coaching tenure. That's pretty impressive. That'll play. Jeremy Roach gets his first two of the night for the Blue Devils and intercepted by Proctor, who's doing everything for the Blue Devils this evening. You can just see the Blue Devils defense is swarming. They're in the gaps. They're making it difficult to make the next pass. And a little bit of a different look for the Blue Devils defense this season without the big man. And Coach Shire talked to us about that prior to the game today, Debbie. He said, you know, playing defense, especially this year, for this team is really going to be a mentality for his club. They're going to have to guard the ball. 
they're going to have to take care of the gaps. They don't have Derek Lively. They don't have Mark Mitchell. They've had two years of these great rim protectors. So they may have to have a, a guard go back there and guard the paint at times this year. And it's a team that's really playing four guards at a time sometimes. You can consider Kyle Filipowski a guard. He can play like one. It could be five guards. Hey, really? A lot of versatility on the Blue Devil team. And Filipowski, as Coach Shire said, 6'11 guard. He's got the ball on the perimeter now. Down low, Ryan Young puts the ball on the deck. Missed the works. And the rebound for Josh Berenbaum. First year transfer to this UNCP team. Now Waverly couldn't hit from distance. I like it though, Waverly gets to get down and transition, take the quick shot while you can get it. Filipowski to the rack for two. See, I told you he was a guard. <laughs> Length of the floor, takes it to the rim, finishes strong. Blue Devil was by 15. job on the ball screen defense. We're going to get a little hand check there on Caleb Foster. Filipowski with the ball. Taking it from half court. Protects it, finishes it strong. How tough is that to defend for opposing defenses, Debbie? He can do a little bit of everything. What a tough matchup he creates. And a foul on the floor. Haskell got tangled up. Ryan Young wanted the hook, and I think he was right on that one. I think the official missed it. The foul was called on Jeremy Roach. It's the preseason for the officials, too, right? Sometimes it's a long preseason <laughs> for the officials. <laughs> Spoken like a former coach. Here is Haskell in the corner. Misses the three. He's the guy that the Braves are really going to count on this year. Haskell, who was their leading scorer a year ago, and a foul to prevent the break there. Goes on Haskell. Little screen, the screener action gets a wide open look for Pembroke. Uh, I like that hustle getting on the floor for the loose ball. I mean, this Pembroke team is tough. They embody their head coach, it, it feels like. I think so. They, they take on his personality. And he's such a great guy. Was, I just really enjoyed talking with him. He's humble, really appreciates the opportunity to play here in Cameron, but a lot of pride in his team and really looking forward to a highly anticipated season. Young looking for Filipowski, the catch, and a foul. A little high-low action there. 6'10 to 7 foot. Ryan Young at the high post. Filipowski gets good position, goes up strong and draws the foul. Second foul on Berenbaum. Filipowski to the line. By the way, Duke in the bonus for the remainder of the first half. Josh Berenbaum's important to UNCP. He's a, he's a transfer. He played in North Florida. He played at Cal Poly Humboldt. He's really skilled. He gives them the good size that they need. He's got a lot of versatility. He can shoot. He can dribble. He pass. Coach Richards is really high on him and the contributions he can give to the Braves this season. Brings Jalen Blakes now off the Duke bench. First action for Jalen. Played in 32 games for the Blue Devils a year ago. As Filipowski gets them both. Blake's had some really good minutes last year. Really known for his defense and his toughness. And he's just a great part of the team culture. He knows what it takes to win. He does his role when he's called to do it. Cobb into the paint. Ten to shoot for the Braves. It's Haskell to Baronbaum on the block. And Ryan Young the rebound for Duke. The Blue Devils switched on that and created that mismatch. And there was a nice pass down low to Josh Berenbaum, who had a good look at the basket, but just couldn't knock it down. Blakes feeds Young. Oh, a nice find. And then it's off the foot of McCain and will belong to the Braves as another one of those talented rookies. TJ Power will check in. Power, who's got maybe aspirations. Uh, he's a pretty good baseball player. I don't know if he's got aspirations to play in two sports, but he's got a pretty good left-handed uh, arm there, Coach Shire was telling us. He's saying he's good enough to be a major league pitcher. He said he's a great shooter. He's a multi-sport athlete. Went to Worcester Academy, the number one player coming out of Massachusetts last season. Massachusetts Gatorade Player of the Year. Had offers from UNC, UVA, Notre Dame, Iowa, and chose the Blue Devils. McCain takes it away. 
and is fouled. And not good there as Haskell is down and appears to be in a little bit of pain. It'll be his second foul. And UNCP certainly hopes he is okay. Great anticipation there by McCain. You can see when Coach Shire talks about the maturity of the freshman on both sides of the ball. He's just got a very mature build for a freshman, just big and strong. And <laughs> off the court, he's a TikTok star. <laughs> that's, that's on the you. court, he's serious. He's that's all you. business. That's you. You're the TikTok star. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one and one here for McCain. What did Coach Shire say? He's unapologetically himself. Well, if you get a close look, he has on Duke blue fingernail polish. And he said off the court, he's just his own guy. He's very confident in who he is. He goes, but he's in 15 years really not seen someone step on the court. There you and go. be as serious. I love it. And it's the perfect match to the uniform. It's a great compliment. I think it looks really good on him. Nineteen point Duke lead. A little full court pressure by the Blue Devils. UNCP getting an opportunity early in the season to practice against it, able to crack the press, and now they'll settle into their half court offense with 18 left on the shot clock. So UNCP team that so far tonight over the first seven and a half plus minutes only got nine shots or two of their first nine from the floor. Just having such a hard time getting a good look at the basket. The Blue Devils have just been swarming, and there's Caleb Foster, another freshman with the steal, taking it to the rim and getting a foul. Foul will go against Carr. Get another look here. Caleb Foster just sitting there in the gap, gets the deflection, the steal, takes it to the rim. Another freshman that Coach Shire just talks so highly about for his toughness and his work ethic. And he's from Harrisburg, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Played at Oak Hill Academy and then to Notre Dame High School in California for his senior year. He had offers from Illinois, from Stanford, from Louisville. Chose Duke. Number four player coming out of California. And another reason why the Blue Devils have a top two Range recruiting class again this year. Made free throw lets the Devils get back in their press. UNC Pembroke does a nice job getting through that pressure. Checks the screen. Just everything is difficult on the offensive end right now for the Braves. Blue Devils just smothering on defense. And Power commits the foul. And that'll take us to a break. It's been all Blue Devils here in the early going. Dukes hit five of their last seven. They're on an 11-0 run, and they lead by 20 in Cameron. Blue Devils by 20 midway through this first half. Chris Edwards, Debbie Taylor. And Debbie, it started off with a lot of offense for the Blue Devils, but it's really been that dominant Duke defense that has held the Braves scoreless for nearly five minutes. Yeah, the Blue De Devil defense has just been like an iron curtain, forcing seven turnovers, which turned that into 12 points, and that's been the big difference in this game, other than Tyrese Proctor's very high shooting to start the game. <laughs> Four of five to start the game from distance was Proctor. Another turnover force there by the Duke defense, and the Blue Devils will get it back. What have you seen from this Duke team, particularly on offense here in the first I don't know, eight-plus minutes of the game. And they have so many offensive weapons, right? Great balance, great versatility. They share the ball well. And and the offense, is there's a good cadence to it. There's Lob. a nice pass. And a finish for Stewart. There's the great play call out of the timeout and perfectly executed from freshman to freshman. We're seeing a lot of talented freshmen, that's for sure. And some... Wiley veterans for the Blue Devils as well. Nearly another turnover as Blake's deflected it. Let's go back and take a look at this alley-oop for the Blue Devils. Caleb Foster to Sean Stewart. Throws it down. Nice screen by Jared McCain. Another freshman right now. Three freshmen on the court for the Blue Devils. Seven to shoot. Carr. Three to shoot. Carr, Barenbaum didn't get it off. And that's just a microcosm of how tough Duke is making it for the Braves right now. They are just playing really tough on the ball. They're making it difficult 
for anybody to get into the paint, making it difficult to even make the next pass. Blue Devil defense looking sharp right now. Caleb Foster running the point for Duke. Got a screen. Penetrates to Blakes, and now Duke wants to run it again. McCain, oh, the hesitation, and the finish off the window, plus the foul. Wow, he's going to be a lot of fun to watch this season. A little shake and bake. Fake spin, finishes at the rim, and almost takes out a cheerleader, but gracefully saves himself and apologizes. Six already for McCain. And did not chip a nail. <laughs> Blue Devils in the double bonus for the rest of the half. McCain knocks down the free throw. And you can see just his game face. You can see the seriousness in his eyes. He's so vibrant off the court. He's got the best smile. And he's right there for the pick from the back. Hustle on the floor. Maybe tried to do a little bit too much there. But Coach Shire applauding the effort from his youngster. That's exactly what you want to see. This is a great opportunity, too, for the young, young players to get some game time minutes from their first time on the court in Cameron. So I don't care who you are, that's pretty exciting. Absolutely. Takes a little bit of the nerves out for whenever the season begins for real on Monday night for the Blue Devils. They'll take on Dartmouth here at 9 p.m. to start the 119th season of Duke basketball. Jones from the baseline connects on the two. That was good defense by Proctor. That was a tough contested jump shot. Nicely done by Jones. Pro uh, McCain in the corner, in and out. And the rebound comes down to Miller. Baronbaum in transition. And a foul against Stewart. Tremavius Jones going to be a big part of what the Braves do this year. See that beautiful step back with a hand in his face. The senior from Johnson, South Carolina. It's his first year, transfer from Glenville State. Coach says he can knock down shots. He gives a much needed length and athleticism, and he's showing off a little of it right there. Inbounds pass picked off. Here's Mark Mitchell with the finish. Mark Mitchell just quietly goes about his job. He started 35 every game he played last year, all 35 games. One of the top defenders in the nation right there with the dunk. And Jones with the bucket and the and one. But to finish up the thought on Mark Mitchell, Coach Shire really praising March Mark Mitchell earlier today, saying he's just a winner. He's just a winner. And I, you know, we were asking him about unsung heroes and he's like you know Mark Mitchell just gets his job done he knows how to win and he knows he made some big shots in clutch situations and you see that nice back cut right there turn your head and they cut back door it's good offense beautiful pass great timing on that by UNC Pembroke five quick points for Jones since he came in for the Braves now on the baseline with the rack attack the two for Jeremy Roach on his birthday Happy birthday, Jeremy. If you're on defense, you have to make Jeremy Roach use the screen. You let him drive baseline, he makes you pay. Jones faces up, an air ball. And look at the Blue Devils, they want to run. McCain, Proctor, who had the hot hand early, with his fifth three of the half. Wow, McCain and Proctor look like they've been playing together for years. Look back at the trailing shooter, Proctor, with the little shot fake sidestep and drills another one. Blue Devils have hit their last three shots. Baronbaum tries the baseline. Jones, nice play. Good find down low. And Proctor able to save it. Look out, here come the Blue Devils. Roach, McCain, and now Roach again. And the Blue Devils will reset. McCain off the bounce is fouled. He'll shoot two. 
you can see you can see the different pace of play for the Blue Devils this year. They just like to get it and go and transition and immediately get into their offense. That's a great kickback by McCain to Proctor. A nice shot fake. And she just knocks down another one. Great team play right there. Foul was on Gray. His first. First year player out of Winston-Salem. His Gray played at East Forsyth High School for his dad. And now McCain to the line for a couple of free throws. Blue Devils have been very good from the line to start this game. Debbie only one miss so far. Duke now 9 of 10 for a team that a season ago was a 77% free throw shooting club. And when you can shoot at that clip and you add another freshman who's a great free throw shooter. Free throws win games down the stretch. McCain is out. And Foster is in. Tell you what, McCain does not look like a freshman in any way, shape, or form. What a great addition to this already talented and experienced squad. What Shai was saying today, yeah, we have three sophomores. That's what you consider experience. <laughs> it used to not be the case, but nowadays with one and done, sophomores experience. And a travel away from the ball there, or travel on the ball. This is a Duke team that returns four guys that have played 30 games in their career for the first time since the 2000-2001 season. Which is, it's odd given the landscape of college basketball right now. It really is, and it says something about Coach Shire and his staff, and these guys wanted to come back because they have unfinished business. They have something they want to do. As you see a nice pass to flip, unable to convert, but they know what they want, they know what they're playing for, and they know why they're here, and they're focused on it every day. Baron Baum, the trailer for three. Faye with the rebound. Out it comes to Gray. And Proctor doing a little bit of everything for Duke tonight. His second rebound already. A couple good looks. Pardon me, his third rebound. Dropping. There's Mitchell. And a foul underneath. Braves are four for 15 right now, having a really difficult time putting the ball in the hole. But credit that Blue Devil defense with a 29-point lead. All Blue Devils here in the first half as Mark Mitchell goes to the line to try to add to this commanding Duke lead. And, you know, Debbie, looking at the game from a UNCP perspective, I, this is a Pembroke team that knew coming in it was going to be a tall order to try and win the game tonight. But one of the things Drew Richards, the head coach of the Braves, told us was they're just trying to win segments, try to win each four-minute segment and put those together as they get ready for their regular season. When you have a large deficit as a coach, you want to break it down into smaller segments and say, okay, guys, after this timeout, we're going to play to the next timeout, and let's see if we can win this next four minutes. Let's let's look at every possession and let's break it down. And we asked Coach Richards what he wanted to get out of this game, and he said he wanted to grow as a team. He wanted to compete, and maybe he could win one or two of those four-minute segments, and that's something that they can hang their hat on. This is a, a team that played a public exhibition game against Houston over the weekend, and he was really proud of his team's efforts. Said outside of the final eight minutes of the first half, thought his team competed really well. And I think they're competing here tonight. The shots just aren't falling from them right now, shooting 27% from the floor, four for 15 shooting, and it's been, it's been difficult contested shots if they can even get the shot off. And the other thing they're doing, having a difficult time with, is really taking care of the ball. 11 turnovers resulting in 19 points. And that's really the big difference in this game right now. Three seconds to shoot here for Haskell. Proctor got bumped and another shot clock violation. It's the second shot clock violation Duke has forced this half. Speaks to just how stingy this Duke team is defensively. The coaching staff has to be happy with what they're seeing on the defensive end this early in the season, putting all the puzzle pieces together. This game gives you an opportunity to work with different lineups, try some different things. Foster on the drive with the floater, got his own rebound, and Filipowski couldn't finish. But the hell ball will keep it with the Blue Devils. Kyle Filipowski right now with four points. Having a little bit of difficulty. I credit UNCP. They're doing a good job giving him a difficult time around the rim tonight. And he's going to have to expect that this year. It's going to be physical play for him. He's going to get, he's going to be the focus of everyone's attention. It's going to be hard to focus on one player against his very 
talented multiple offensive weapon Duke team, but he is going to be the focal point after having such a stellar freshman season and being one of the top players in the country. Foul off the inbounds there will go on Waverly. And again, the Braves have been over the limit for quite a while, so it'll be McCain going back to the line here for two shots. You said earlier that Filipowski put on 18 mm -hmm. pounds over the summer. It's a lot of work in the weight room. It's great nutrition. Mark Mitchell put on 12 pounds over the summer. Seems like that's something you're seeing more and more of with players going from their rookie season into their sophomore season. They don't just grow on the court, they grow off the court as well. Yeah, it's a big jump from high school to college. It's a big, it's a lot faster, it's a lot more physical, it's a lot more intellectual, the game. And then your body's still growing when you're 17, 18 years old. These guys were young last year. Off the screen, Vadir. Contested by Filipowski and a good finish by Nigel Vadir. Nigel Vadir, the junior. Little curl cut, banking it off the glass. That'll be a story he tells for a while. Here's McCain, absorbs the contact and knocks down the bucket. Wow, just smooth, little jump, stop and pop. Beautiful shot. A baker's dozen for the rookie. Not a bad debut, I just love his focus. Haskell, good find down low. Everything but the finish for Faye. Get another chance at it. And the junior from the Senegal with his first two. Back-to-back -back possessions. Braves have gotten into the paint. Filipowski knocks down the triple. <laughs> He's like, all right, well, if I'm going to struggle around the rim, give it to me out here. <laughs> Showing a little bit of his versatility. Nice ball screen defense right there by Filipowski. Hustles back to guard Amadou Faye. Blakes took it away, and then we've got a whistle away from the ball. As the Blue Devils will have a couple of subs coming in as the foul goes on Haskell. And that's the third for Haskell in this first half. Another look coming. Bradley Haskell is just such an important piece. This Pembroke team, the junior, is from Pinecrest High School. 12 players from North Carolina on the UMPC Peace team. But he's their first team all-conference player. They need him on the floor, especially in this game. Well, he picked up those two quick fouls in the first couple minutes, and that really seemed to derail what the Braves wanted to do tonight. As Ryan Young comes in for the Blue Devils. The Blue Devils just continue to roll in multiple bodies, different lineups, different players. Get a good opportunity early in the season to see what works well, what combinations gel. One of two there for Roach. To piggyback off that point, obviously as someone who did that as a coach, when you were a head coach, seeing those combinations, do you maybe see a combination that works that you want to exploit or maybe try to dive deeper in practice as you get ready for your season? Yeah, you know, sometimes you give a player a chance and they surprise you. I mean, you put them out there and they do things you didn't, didn't know they could do or they work well with a certain group of players. So early in the season, you really want to see what you have, especially with your freshmen and how the whole team works together and who works best with who. How much can you tell as a coach in the first 30, 35 practices that you have going against your own guys? I mean, I think you get a good, solid idea, and you know a lot about these guys as recruits and that they're heralded and what you can do, and you've seen them play against some of the best competition in the country, but everything's different when you come together as a team. And, and you know, you've got this game tonight, but it'll be interesting when the, when, the, when the competition gets more heated and the talent gets better, who rises to the occasion? But you know what you're going to get with your returners, and then we'll see what we get from the freshmen. TJ Power back in and making his debut tonight is Jaden Shoot. One of two there from the line. It's a long season, and you know, we saw that with the Blue Devils last year with the adversity of their injuries and you know the really big wins and the, the tough losses, but how they pulled it together at the end of the season when everyone was unhealthy and went with that nine grade game win streak into the NCAA tournament, playing their best basketball. Yeah, Coach Shire said he felt like that his team was probably one of the best 
in the country at the end of last year. Tough matchup there to end the season. The injuries as well. Foul here on Ryan Young as Gardner gets the in one. Nice take to the basket by the freshman from Charlotte. Charlotte Country Day. Dallas Gardner. She's got seven points right now to lead all scorers for Pembroke. He's a good looking freshman in 6 3. Completes his second and one of the night. Well done. It's a kid from Charlotte. I'm sure he's thought a lot about playing in Cameron mm -hmm. during the course of his career. Uh, I'm sure he's got some friends and family here tonight. A lot of North Carolina natives, as you pointed out, on this UNC Pembroke team, and I'm sure it's a dream. For all of these guys, Coach Richard spoke to that during our conversation this week, said, you know, it's just really cool to have this opportunity. He was so appreciative. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, we made a call. It's tough to get an opportunity to play in Cameron, and we're so grateful that we have the opportunity to, to do this. Mike Schrage, who's on the Duke staff, I guess knows one of the assistants at UNCP and sent out a text, and Coach Richard says he said he was reading his daughter a bedtime story when he got the text that said, hey, you want to come play in Cameron? As McCain misses the three, power the rebound. And McCain, another floater. The iron a bit unkind. And here come the Braves the other way. You can see the great body control that Jared McCain has. And a foul as Gardner will go back to the line. When we come back, it's all Blue Devils here in the first half and their final tune-up before the regular season. Duke leading big here at home. The three for me only at Chili's serves up bottomless drinks, bottomless chips and salsa, and a classic old-timer with cheese and fries for just $10.99. Hey, it's three for me, not three for us. It's my $10.99, it's my three for me. Get out of here. Nope. Ooh, I can whack hands all day. This Chili's 3 for me is the best 1099 you can eat. Oh, I'm so glad we did this. I'm so glad we did this. I'm so glad we did this. Life is for living. Let's partner for all of it. I'm so glad we did this. Edward Jones. Introducing This Is Me Now, my first lingerie collection with Intimissimi. Intimissimi, the art of Italian lingerie. Duke by 30 with under four minutes to go in the first half. You see there, UNCP has made their last three shots. We talked a moment ago, Debbie, about how Coach Richard just wants his team to win those four-minute segments. So if you look from the last media timeout, to this one, they were only outscored 10 to 9. So you got to be pr pretty proud of that. Making the last three shots, finding a way to put the ball in the basket, attacking the rim. Let's see how they can close out this half. First free throw goes for Gardner. I guess you could really talk about this as a continuation of the last segment and have a chance to win this segment. Probably feels like now some of the nerves have gone away for the Braves a little bit. You gotta think, you come into Cameron, you're playing the number two team in the country, you gotta have some jitters or you're not human. Um, you can settle in a little bit and, and start to play your game. And while this gap is wide, Braves have been playing tough. Going to a zone for the first time yeah. tonight. A Little bit of a two, three zone look. See what the Blue Devils do to attack that. Nice high post flash by Filipowski and he's gonna try to go one on one and yeah. get it done. Nine for Filipowski tonight. This is Jones, who came in with a hot hand off the bench for the Braves. Waverly off the curl. Asking for the timeout, and he got it. And that's a play that the coaching staff, I'm sure, will point to as we take a Quick break, we'll come back with the final moments of the first half on ACC Network Extra. Your trip 
children at visitingcsmalltowns.com. What makes a life a good one? Is it our adventures? Or the friends we find along the way? Is it the challenges we conquer together? Maybe it's the people's lives we touch every single day. So, what makes a life a good one? You'll have to figure that one out for yourself. Fifty-one to twenty, Blue Devils with the big lead late in the first half. Two timeouts remaining now for the Braves after they called that timeout to save the possession. They're not really interested in how many timeouts they have left, though. They're just enjoying their timeout there against a different opponent after all this preseason practice. Thirty practices in forty-two days for the Blue Devils. Waverly going to pull for three. And it'll be Duke Ball. You can sense the excitement from Coach Shire earlier today, just how excited he was for the season to get started and for his team to play somebody else. Oh, and you think you've got almost 80% of your scoring back for your starters and this heralded, talented freshman class. Like we said in the open, there is so much to be excited about, and everybody's been anxious to see this team play, including Coach Shire and his staff. Here's Young on the block. Had a shot rejected. It comes to the wing and Proctor going to try it again. And look at the hustle by Blakes. Nearly won the possession, but it will go to the Braves. That's Jalen Blakes. He does all the dirty work. You saw in the last possession down here in the defensive end, he got the deflection off that handoff. He was sitting in the gap right there with the quick hands. And there he chases down the offensive board. He's just doing all the little things. Remember how tough Blakes was for the Blue Devils a year ago after that nose injury played with a mask for much of the stretch run of that season for Duke. And a moving screen. I'll give it back to Duke. Yeah, Coach Shire talked about Blakes' toughness, his defensive ability. He's on the ACC all academic team. I mean, he played 13, a little over 13 minutes a game last season and 32 games, two starts. Probably anticipate him getting a few more minutes this season, but he's a role player and he knows his role and he comes in and he gets the job done. Roach fouled on the drive there, but free throws coming for the Blue Devils. Pretty good when you can bring a guy that's played 53 career games off your bench. It shows the depth that Coach Shire's club has cultivated. He had some big moments last year, knocked down some shots key times and key games. And Roach, another one of those leaders, 95 career games for Duke. He comes in to this season, 20 points shy of 1,000 for his career, would be the 68th player in Duke history to usurp 1,000 career points. It's amazing. He was on that Final Four team several years ago. Last season, he had 23 points in the ACC final, 23 points in the opening round against Oral Roberts. He was just so tough down the stretch after he had to sit for four games with that toe injury. Now, keep in mind, the points he scores tonight, and he's got seven, they don't count toward his 1,000. This is just a friendly, to borrow a soccer term. Switching continues on the perimeter. Filipowski's even getting in on the switching, and Blue Devils is not letting the Braves in the paint. They just cannot find a seam in that defense. And a block there by Blakes, and the Blue Devils want to run. Mitchell in the corner. The spin. Oh, a nice rejection there by UNCP. That was Amadou Fay down low, the big shot blocker for the Braves. And then the finish by Barenbaum. And that's what the Braves want to see more of when they get in the league and Division II action. Turn in their defense. The block by Amadou Faye from the Senegal. Making an impact in his first year. And Josh Barenbaum, another first-year player, finishing at the rim in transition. Filipowski, mid-post. Now to Proctor. Roach all the way to the hoop. And everything but the finish, he'll get a chance to get a couple. We talked about how good this UNCP team has been traditionally on defense, defense leading to offense here. There's a nice block. 
pass ahead to Barenbaum, and he goes up and under, and he finishes, and that's nice offense for the Braves. I want to go on the highlight reel. And it's interesting, a couple of transfers for, to this UNCP program, which is not something maybe you think about a whole lot at the Division II level. And Coach Richards was pretty honest with us about the, the strategy of taking transfers. Doesn't so much like the Division II to Division I transfers and guys not having to sit out a year. But said, you know, it, it's hard to be picking guys that are coming from a, a mid-major Division I because you don't know how their numbers would translate at the Division II level. Yeah. I love how he said, the portal giveth and the portal taketh yes. away. <laughs> I think every coach says that. But it looks like the, you, get the, you get the horn set up there. It looks like the transfers he's gotten this year really helping fill in the needed positions on his team. Final 45 seconds of the first half. Faye got a little tangled up there, and the Blue Devils the other way. Filipowski down low. Oh, with a sweet touch. What a beautiful soft touch on the turnaround jump shot. He's got to feel good about that one. Getting that ball down, get position in transition. Nice finish. 11 for Filipowski. About a four second difference. Shot clock to game clock. Baron Baum. Waverly, the drive, an air ball. But Baron Baum there to clean up the rebound. And Duke will take the use it or lose it time out here with nine and a half seconds to go until intermission. Namadu and Fay are doing a nice job around the basket for the Braves. Able to keep that one alive and finish it off the tip. Coach Shire calls that timeout. Get his team a little bit organized with 9.5 seconds for this last possession. Gives him an opportunity to draw something on the board. And this is also an important element of the game, too, at the end of the half scenario. I mean, this is great practice for everybody. You can rep it in practice all you want, but it's different in a game setting. For sure. Anytime you get an opportunity to practice a time score situation live, it's a benefit. Saw UNCP go to that zone a little bit ago. Seems to be pretty effective for them. Yeah, it looks like they're going to stay in it on this one. So we'll see what Coach Shire's able to do. Length of the court against the 2-3 zone, 9.5 seconds on the clock. And it'll be Mitchell who will just roll it in. Proctor, who had the hot hand to start the game. On the baseline, up and under, and a foul as Roach was on the drive. One of the ways to beat the zone is to screen it, and you saw a screen on that top right side. Roach is so quick, he drives the close, and he gets the ball, and he just quickly attacks the closeout, and he's able to get to the rim and draw the foul. Good night for Roach, nine points, five of six from the foul line in 16 minutes. Fourth scorer for the Blue Devils to go into double digits. And we talked about the balance scoring and all the offensive weapons. McCain with 13, Roach with 10, Proctor with 15, Filipowski with 11. Great balance for John Shire's club. Another one for Roach. Now two seconds to go in the half. Waverly, three-quarter court. Oh, it almost went. And the Blue Devils with a commanding halftime advantage. It started with the hot shooting of Tyrese Proctor, who was five of seven from beyond the arc in the first half. Four Blue Devils are in double figures, and it's Duke with a commanding halftime lead at Cameron. Stay with us, more coming up on ACC Network Extra. Whether you want an iron with effortless speed, exceptional feel, or precise control, the performance you're after has one name. T-Series Irons from Titleist.
Cinderella Final Four runs of Florida Atlantic and San Diego State. Yet behind those memories were dominant performances in the regular season that foretold those ultimate destinations. Right now, practice has begun and sneakers are squeaking on hardwoods across the country to determine the ultimate destinations of this season's title contenders, signaling that college basketball is back. Defending champ UConn behind emerging star big man Donovan Klingon is again a top contender to win the Big East, but will have to battle the nation's top point guard Tyler Kolek and Marquette and the recruiting and coaching prowess of Rick Pitino at St. John's. A title favorite again is Kansas, with returning Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year Dewan Harris and all defensive honoree Kevin McCullough. But the difference maker for the Jayhawks could be Michigan transfer Hunter Dickinson, a gifted offensive threat and passer that Bill Self can build an offense around. Duke is the class of the ACC and brings back workhorse Kyle Filipowski, point guard Tyrese Proctor, and a stellar recruiting hall of lottery talent to make the Blue Devils a Final Four favorite. Purdue brings back National Player of the Year and the most productive and efficient player in the nation in Zach Eady. But Tom Izzo's experienced and athletic Michigan State Spartans stand in their way of title contention. Kentucky's John Calipari looks to reestablish SEC dominance with his best recruiting class in years, headlined by guard DJ Wagner, wing Justin Edwards, and big man Aaron Bradshaw. Kentucky has been overshadowed by SEC competitors, top-ranked contenders Tennessee, Arkansas, and Alabama in recent years. The last SEC title for Cal's Wildcats was in 2019. The 2024 NCAA tournament is the ultimate destination of every team dreaming of cutting the nets down in Phoenix. But the deliciously wild regular season ride is what will separate the contenders from the pretenders and identify the little guys that can crash the party. It is finally college hoop season again. Let the ride begin. Welcome into this ACC Network halftime report. Hope you've enjoyed the first half so far alongside Coach Seth Greenberg and our two national champs, former MOPs, Luke Hancock, Joel Berry, Kelsey Riggs. Great to be with you. First half of the season just getting underway, you guys. So let's talk about some big picture storylines. And Luke, who's someone that you think can come in and make an instant impact this year? Yeah, back 100 years ago when I played, you couldn't transfer in conference. All these rules are so different. But I think the crazy thing is the transfers that have come in conference, you know, rivalries are switching guys. And, and one of the best rivalries we have in this is Miami and Florida State. And I think that impact transfer is going to be Matthew Cleveland. Jordan Miller was such an X factor for Miami being able to make runs these last two years. A guy like Matthew Cleveland that's long, athletic, shows a ton of versatility, play a little inside, outside, and can guard multiple positions. He's going to slot in very well for Jordan Miller's role in minutes. I think he's going to be an X factor for Miami to make another run this year. I think it's a good choice. Harrison Ingram's going to be huge, I think, for Carolina as well. I think they needed a kind of a hybrid forward who can make plays to open up the floor with Baycott. Perfect, I think Ingram is that guy. Yeah, and I will go with, I agree with both of your picks. I'm going to go with Joe Girard. I think having him with, uh, with Clemson is a huge gift. You talk about having P.J. Hall down there in the post, being able to spread the floor with Chase Hunter and what he did last year, moving over to the point guard spot. There's impact players all over the ACC, and I'm excited to see what, what happens this year. And it is interesting when it's those conference, interconference transfers. We've seen it before. Going to see it again this year. Matthew Cleveland, especially interesting because we saw what he did in those games when he was playing with Florida State to Miami. Now he switches over. Joel, let's go under the radar team. Who's somebody you have your eye on? Yeah, just spoke about him, and it's Clemson. Clemson is a team who they have all the pieces, and you talk about having depth. That is important when you get to the NCAA tournament, having 10, 11, 12 guys that can get, on, get out on the court and you don't have a drop off. Like I, to my point earlier, Joseph Girard coming mm -hmm. over from Syracuse is a really good pickup for Clemson. Chase Hunter was a guy that moved over to the point guard spot last year and he thrived in that position. Now you bring in somebody else that can play in the pick and roll, that can shoot the ball, 
really space the floor for a guy like P.J. Hall in the post. I think that is, uh, that is, is a, a good get for Clemson. Um, and I'm excited to see what Brad Brownell and that Clemson team can do. Two of the five highest scoring returning players are playing for Clemson. And those guys that you just mentioned with Joseph Girard coming over. Coach, let's go player of the year because the season's just starting. We might as well go ahead and predict that, right? But right, for right now, who would be the player of the year? Heading common the sense would say it would be Kyle Filipowski. But I'm not so common. So <laughs> I'm going to go Armando Baycott because I think the chemistry of this team is going to be totally different. Look, the guy's the all-time leading rebounder in the history of North Carolina. He leads North Carolina in double-doubles, right? All of a sudden now, he's going to play with a pure point guard, Elliot Cadeau, R.J. Davis. Now, all of a sudden, he's going to be able to play with a little bit more freedom. They're going to have better spacing, more shot-making. All of a sudden, Armando's going to get down to the block where he, you know he's going to rebound the basketball, but they're going to play through him a little bit more, especially in transition. I think he's going to have an absolutely monster year. Mondo's been there the last 10 years. He's just not <laughs> quite getting to that point. This is the year, I guess, Coach thinks you he makes player of the year. You were a senior when he was a freshman, right? That's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. Joe wasn't born when he started. <laughs> and Coach Davis emphasized that they will play a lot faster this yeah. year. I believe that will help Armando Bacot, especially when you talk about some of the secondary break, being able to sprint to the basket, get an easy Ooh. bucket. That is where he can thrive, and I think they were missing that last year. So I think with him being able to get some easy baskets yes. in transition will help him a lot in his game. This is a team that last year had such high expectations. We, of course, know what happened. I think this is going to be a team that is playing with a vengeance and an even more passion and purpose this year based on everything that they've already been through and accomplished in their years there. Not 10 years quite, but it feels like this group has been together a long time. Speaking of together for a long time and a good time, how about ACC PM weekdays, 4 o'clock? Mark Pack Taylor Tannenbaum take you through all the ACC's biggest storylines and of course breaking down what happens across the conference as basketball season continues but this game continues on the other side of this break. All Blue Devils in the first half is the second ranked team in the country closing down the preseason portion of their schedule. A great first half, Debbie, for John Shire's club. The Blue Devils put four in double figures in the opening 20 minutes. Showing their scoring versatility and balance and then what they're able to do on the defensive end and on the glass. 18 rebounds, forced 15 turnovers. Look at them from behind the arc, six for 11. Good first half for Duke. Six for 11, five of those threes came from Tyrese Proctor including four in the first three minutes. He was on fire when he, he got was. out. He's been practicing way too long. Let's play ball. <laughs> Braves get the opening touch of the second half. Thanks for joining us along with Debbie Taylor. I'm Chris Edwards. If you're UNCP here, final preseason tune-up, and you've obviously faced two very talented teams in Houston and now Duke, what was the message for Coach Richards at the break? You know, he said he wanted to compete, and I think his team did compete. And you take the little victories away, the, the possessions where you executed well and you scored, and, and that, that four-minute stretch where it was 10-9, to 9, and the, you pull out the positives. And I, I think his team has shown up today after a few jitters in Cameron. But let's see what they can do in the second half. Blue Devils, an empty trip to start the half. Nice little pick-and-roll move there, and a finish with the right hand for Elijah Cobb. Nicely done on the screen and roll. Help doesn't get over there quick enough. Cobb's having a nice day. On the flip side, as Proctor and the Blue Devils go to work, they feed Filipowski down low, and he got the finish. If you're John Shire, what did you tell your team at the break? I think if you're John Shire, you're probably never happy with what they're doing, but you again point out the positives, and then you talk about the things they can do better, and I'm sure he focused on the rebounding. Rebounding margin is not that big, and Duke, one of the best rebounding teams in the country last season, and there's a long-range shot from Bradley Haskell, the junior. They said he's their all-conference player, is le the leading returning scorer. They really need him to step up. His first points tonight, Proctor Filipowski for the dunk. That's how you execute the screen and roll. Beautiful pass by Proctor. Perfect timing on that. Nice roll to the rim by Filipowski. That's deflected away, they say, and the Braves will keep it with 13 to shoot. Verdier. Now it comes to Haskell. Just a desperation heave, and that's an air ball. Nice look at the pick and roll. Filipowski comes over. Proctor drags that dribble, finds him just at the right time on the roll. Filipowski flushes it home. 
One of those, textbook execution. One of those four Blue Devils in double figures is Filipowski now at 13 points for the ACC preseason player of the year. Here's Proctor, uh, one of the few misfires from distance for Proctor tonight, just his second miss from beyond the arc. The jumper wouldn't go for Miller, and the Blue Devils the other way. Proctor quickly in transition. Now Mark Mitchell will head to the line. We've gotten a good opportunity to see the, the change in pace that Duke wants to play a lot faster this year. With the personnel they have, they can just get out and go. Anybody can handle the ball, score quickly in transition, put some pressure on the defense, and Mark Mitchell that time able to get himself to the free throw line. With, with Duke's impetus on wanting to play faster this year, are the Blue Devils able to do that because of the experience that they returned from last year's team? Yeah, I think last season, some of the young players needed to learn how to take care of the ball. You know, I think turnovers hurt them a little bit early, and, and now with a season and a summer under their belt, um, you can see they're playing quickly, but they're handling it well. I mean, this isn't going to be their highest quality opponent, but still, um, they have the personnel to do it. Seven points now for Mark Mitchell on the Julius Irving small forward watch list. This Duke team picked to win the ACC for the eighth time in the last 11 years. The champions of the ACC tournament a year ago. Down low, Haskell left it short, and the Blue Devils the other way. This is Proctor. Mitchell's going to try one from distance and knock it down. And I love that Mark Mitchell. He's got a lot of tools in that tool belt. Coach Shire said he's a guy that's going to play this game for a long time. Lepowski switching on to a smaller play, where then switching back. Driving the base, or driving the lane is Gardner, and he'll head to the line. I wouldn't call it the prettiest shot I've ever seen, but Mark Mitchell spotting up with the left. Kind of a straight line, knocks it down. You don't get any style points. They long, all count the long same. As it goes in the basket, <laughs> we'll take it. Gardner had nine first half points, and he's still stuck on nine for the Braves. That's the seventh, seventh three for Duke early in the second half. Shooting 54% from behind the arc right now. Shot 34% as a group a season ago. Gardner, the freshman, with his 10th point of the game. First Brave to go into double digits. Got to be happy about that. Got your freshman if you're Coach Richards. Pretty good way to start your collegiate career if you're a freshman on this UNCP club. You play a game at Houston, then play a game in Cameron. That was great defense right there by Bradley Haskell. He switched down onto Filipowski. 6-2 on seven foot and use his quick feet to get around and deny that pass into the low post. Haskell, a first team all-conference pick for the Braves last year. And Coach Richard says, you know, he really got a great opportunity last year and took advantage of it. But the big key for him is to manage those emotions. Still working on that. He picked up those two quick fouls tonight. Yeah, he looks uh, pretty steady, though. He, he seems like he's like kept his composure, played with a consistent demeanor, and that's a big part of the game for some folks as we see Jeremy Roach get into the paint. And he's going to the free throw line tonight. Blue Devils have already taken 27 free throw attempts. UNCP only seven. Yeah. Foul, by the way, went on Baron Baum, his third. Some foul trouble now mounting up for the Braves. A dozen now for Jeremy Roach. Mark Mitchell with that last three. He went into double digits as well. So right now, five blue doubles. Double digit scoring. And this is obviously sort of what you expected. A Division I team, Duke the number two team in the country, UNC Pembroke. Really good at for their level, but certainly not the weapons that the Blue Devils have. But I think Coach Richards and his staff 
very optimistic about the season the Braves could have with some of their returners. And given how difficult their schedule is at the beginning of the year, they can they can navigate that. They feel like they've got a chance to make some noise at the Division II ranks. Yeah, they've got some really great pieces. As we said, they come in preseason ranked eighth in the country. They have six players who averaged over nine points a game last season. So they've got some nice offensive balance of their own. Filipowski didn't like that call. Vociferously disagreed with Isaac Barnett. The Braves again able to get into the paint. You know, and that's a focal point for this Blue Devil defense without the rim protector, without mm -hmm. Derek Lively, without a Mark Mitchell. Can you guard tough? Can you guard the ball tough? Can you help? Can you keep the opponent out of the paint and protect the rim? Coach Shire said it's a mentality. But, but as a former coach, it's a commitment to it, and it to be committed to being good on defense. It is, and five guys have to move together. Your favorite word on defense cannot be help. <laughs> Though you have to have help when you need it. Sure. Proctor has been so steady for the Blue Devils tonight. A little cross street here, trying to get Filipowski open. Proctor dives to the rim. Filipowski, a little isolation. Unable to finish. Here come the Braves. Really good defense there from UNCP. They're making his life difficult. He has not had the easiest game. He struggled a little bit about the rim. We saw him lock down that long range shot. Credit the UNC Pembroke defense. Nearly stolen away. Active hands by Foster. Duke's ball screen defense has been impressive tonight. Left that one short. And the offensive rebound wouldn't go for Miller. And here come the Blue Devils. Numbers for Duke. Mitchell going to take it to the rack. And it was fouled on the way up. Foul goes on Waverly. It's only the third of the Braves in this second half. Blue Devils playing great defense to start the second half and have the big lead at home. Big night for the Blue Devils, commanding lead for John Shire's club, and you can see the balance that the Blue Devils have displayed offensively tonight. Five players in double figures. Really consistent evening for the Blue Devils on the offensive end. Well, and balance is just such a great weapon for any team, any coach, because the opponent can't key on just one player. Um, and if somebody's having a bad night, they, they don't have to show up every single night. I mean, sometimes the shots just don't fall, and there's somebody else who can pick up the slack. So. We're able to get a first look at the multiple weapons that Duke has in their arsenal. And there's a few more even sitting on the bench. Look, still 15 minutes to go in the game. And this is a division to opponent, yes. But if you're on the Duke coaching staff, John Shire, the rest of his staff, what do you think's pleased him most about maybe someone he didn't expect to have the, the offensive output that they're having so far today. I think he's getting what he wanted from his starters, you know, and now it's really seeing what can he get from the guys off the bench. But one thing you can say about this Blue Devil team is they're tremendously unselfish. They don't see a guy out here who's out for themselves. They share the ball so incredibly well. Saw Ryan Young come in a moment ago for the Blue Devils as Mark Mitchell went out. Proctor. Down low for Filipowski. And everything but the finish again, but he'll head to the line. Filipowski made a living at the foul line last year. Shot 170 free throws. 170 attempts, and he shot 77%. I mean, that is just the next closest to him was Jeremy Roach with 91 attempts. So he shot 80 more free throws than Jeremy Roach. It's one thing to get there, as Filipowski did, but another thing to knock them down at the rate that he did. Yeah, he's a big guy, and he's a great free throw shooter, and he does such a good job getting great position. And then he's got some a variety of ways he can score around the rim, and he's just improved with that over the summer. Talked about adding those 18 pounds in the offseason. Gives the Blue Devils their biggest advantage of the night. And T.J. Power is in for the preseason ACC Player of the Year. We talked about T.J. Power a little bit in the first half and how great of a baseball player he is, Coach Shire. So, you know, he was a guy that kind of came on late in the recruiting process, but really impressed. Actually beat Kyle Filipowski in a high school game. That's the first time Coach Shire saw him. Haskett knocks down his second three of the second half. Yeah, Coach Shire really talking, raving about his shooting ability. 
Here's Power in the corner. Right on cue, he knocks down the triple. Thank you, TJ. What a quick release, That's huh? Great. Find your shooter, know where he is. Great drive middle, defense collapses, kicks out, and he gets that shot out of his hand quickly. Gardner, and that's right through the hands of McCain. It'll stay with the Braves. How about this Duke defense here? Just some miscommunication. And that's, you know, that's freshman right there. And that's a good read right there by Nigel Verdeer. But as a freshman, defense is one of the biggest learning curves you have. And it's still early in the season. And, and TJ Power will learn as he goes. A lot of that's communication. We were in shoot around today. It was pretty loud out there. It was. Like, uh, I think you've got a lot of good communication going on as Jerry right. McCain goes to the rim. Everything but the bucket there for McCain. And that's the fourth foul on Waverly. Already five on the team here for the Braves with south of 13 minutes to go. McCain steps to the line for the 34th free throw of the night. Was a perfect seven of seven in the first half. And just a you know, testament, they've done a fantastic job getting to the rim, attacking the paint. It was obviously a point of emphasis for Coach Shire, knowing yeah. they had a size advantage tonight. Getting out in transition, too. Duke with 25 of their 78 points as fast break points tonight. That goes back to Duke wanting to play fast. Gardner to the corner now, and Haskell taken away by the Blue Devils. Good job by TJ Power there with the closeout, breaking that play up a little bit. Foster to the hoop for two. Kayla Foster says, let me get in this game, using that high screen and taking all the way to the bucket, the freshman. He has four tonight, and we haven't talked a whole lot about Foster, but Coach Shire, we talked earlier, did sing his praises as Haskell gets the bucket, and he was really high, Coach Shire is, on all four of his freshmen. I think he, they've showed us why. That was a really nice back cut, nice defensive read by Nigel Verdeer for that last layup. You haven't seen a whole lot of those interior looks for the Braves tonight. Another quick release. Power gets his own rebound. Blakes. Now it's Foster for two more. God, and what a soft touch off the glass by the freshman Caleb Foster. Cobb, back to Gardner now. Braves just really like to use this continuous ball screen defense, and Duke has done a really nice job defending it this evening. Long range shot. Number 22, Jamarvius Jones from Johnson, South Carolina, another first year player. Coach told us he likes to knock down shots. He's good at it. A nice move by Blakes. Gets it to Foster. McCain had a lane to the basket. Through the hands of Young and the Braves the other way. They don't have numbers. Haskell will take it himself and an offensive foul. That's the fourth on the junior from Southern Pines. And it takes us to a timeout. All Blue Devils here tonight, offense and defense for Duke as they close down the preseason. Blue Devils by 42. All Blue Devils so far tonight in their final preseason tune-up before the ACC slate begins toward the end of the year. Of course, things start for real for the Blue Devils on Monday night against Dartmouth, a 9 o'clock tip here at Cameron against Dartmouth. And then the Blue Devils Debbie have a, another challenging non-conference slate as Coach Shire's club going to be well tested by the time they get to ACC action. And a miss there by Foster. We take a look at some of the notable non-conference games. Of course, Arizona here, the Michigan State, the neutral side game, the ACC-SEC challenge. New this year, Blue Devils will be in Fayetteville. And then a Baylor club that's always dangerous. 
as you said, they will be tested early, and, and Blue Devils were undefeated in Cameron Indoor last season, 16 and 0. This season, 18 home games on the slate, but some nice non-conference opponents early to test the Blue Devils. As we see, Sean Stewart, 6'9", freshman from Florida, finish around the rim. Yeah, last year was the 19th perfect season at home in program history, and John Shire became the first coach in ACC history to go undefeated at home in his first year. Get to watch Sean Stewart operate down low off the dribble. The nice spin move. Another good looking freshman. Number one player coming out of the state of Florida. He has wanted to play at Duke since he was a young guy and he got his wish and he's here and he is excited to be here. McDonald's All-American as well. Scored six points and had a game-high eight rebounds in the McDonald's All-American game last year. He comes from a basketball family. His dad played in the NBA for eight years. But Shire says he is a big-time athlete. Again, another one of those freshmen that he just spoke glowingly about. Really, Coach talked glowingly about this entire team. He said, and this was what stuck with me and really resonated, was this is a fun group to be around. They're committed and they're everything you want a Duke basketball player to be. Uh, and he's just the perfect players coach. The guys relate well to him. He takes time for them. He gets to know them all incredibly well. And he, you know, he's he seemed you can see if you could feel his excitement for the season coming through and the opportunity they have this year. How much different is it for Coach Shire this year, Debbie, year two versus going into year one this time a season ago? Well, last season, Jeremy Roach was the only returning <laughs> starter. Uh, you know, he had a really young and experienced team. He was incredibly patient with them. They went through a lot of ups and downs. We see Jalen Blake's finishing the room this year. He's got players back, four starters back, a lot of experience. He's got a season under his belt. And I mean, there's high expectations, but he handles it well. And he's looking forward to seeing what they can accomplish. Again, he said they're here, they came back for a reason, and they focus on it every day. Saw Blakes get the bucket, his first two of the night for the Blue Devils. Really nifty find here by Blakes. Nice job finding that gap in the defense and the seam and attacking the bucket, laying it over the rim. Foster has a lane to the hoop and is fouled. Got an opportunity to see a bunch of different guys play the point. And that point guard position is so crucial when you do need to set up your offense. And, you know, I think Duke this year will see them flow a little bit more into their offense out of transition without so many called sets. But having a leader on the floor who can handle Jeremy Roach did such a great job with it last year. But having multiple players who can play that spot, handle the ball. One and one here for Foster. We talked about the challenging schedule to start the year. For the Blue Devils, UNCP will also face a really challenging slate. They, perf on purpose, uh, really challenge themselves playing in a preseason event that begins over the weekend down in Florida with some of the best teams at the Division II level. The miss there, and the rebound comes to the Blue Devils. It rolls to Stewart, gets under control, and finishes. Wasn't pretty, but it's a bucket. It all counts the same in the box score. Final eight and a half minutes. From the corner of the three, no good by Jones. Stewart with the rebound. Foster to the corner. This is shoot for three. Jaden shoot. He can shoot it. 6'5 sophomore from Illinois. He was a 2022 Illinois Gatorade Player of the Year. 4-0 student in high school. Didn't get a lot of minutes last year, but improved over the summer. And you can see what a nice stroke he has from long range. And now Stewart doesn't have numbers. And wisely lets help arrive. A transition opportunity as Foster with his first three of the night. And the Braves call timeout. Foster and the freshman doing it for the Blue Devils. Duke hitting it from the outside. It was shoot, it was Foster, and it's all Blue Devils tonight. 
Duke in the midst of a 12 to 2 run over the last three minutes. Back to back threes for the Blue Devils. Really, Duke firing on all cylinders tonight, Debbie. They're shooting 56% from beyond the arc. Three by shoot, three by Foster. Ten triples on the game for the Blue Devils. Duke shooting 60% overall from the field tonight. And shooting almost 69% this half alone. Fall away jumper goes for Carr, his first points. He worked hard for that bucket. Nice jump shot. Carr, a guy who's been all over the place, started his career at UNCW, then went to Cape Fear Community College. Now at Pembroke, where he was a third-team all-conference selection last year. Power and shoot. Now to Foster, going to step back. Left that one short. I think that shot got tipped. Foster wanted the foul. Not the best shot selection of the night. By the way, we should take a moment before we get out of here tonight to send our thoughts to Bobby Knight's family. Coach Knight passing away just before we came on the air. A big dunk there from Elijah Cobb. But, man, one of the greats in college basketball is certainly going to be missed. Mm, an icon in college basketball and a mentor, longtime mentor to Coach K. Yes. Big loss for the college basketball community. All our best to the Knight family. Tipped as Blakes goes to the rack and heads to the line. So the Blue Devils getting it done on both ends of the floor. Free throws coming for Blakes when we come back. All Blue Devils tonight. Back in Cameron Indoor Stadium where the Blue Devils have the big lead in their final preseason tune-up. Free throws coming for the Blue Devils here coming out of the timeout as the foul was on Baron Baum. A couple of new additions, Debbie, to the Duke coaching staff prior to the season is Will Avery back, a Blue Devil alum, had a great career here joining the coaching staff, and Emmanuel Dilty also joining Coach Shire's staff. Really spoke glowingly about both of those guys today. Having a great staff that works well together, that's unselfish, that's about the team and about the goal is so important to any team's success. And Coach Shire just speaking so highly about the groups he's chosen to work with him and the nice backdoor back screen with the alley-oop pass and the finish. That's not well defended right there. That's one that the Blue Devils are going to look at on film. Yeah, Cobb's got eight points all this half. Shoot off the bounce and didn't get the roll. Coach Shire said with Emmanuel Dilty that he saw that wanted to get the best coach he could. And a guy who's really worked his way up the coaching ranks, began his coaching career at the junior college level and is now here at Duke. And Coach Shire said, you know, he's really one of those guys that's holding all of our guys accountable. Well, he knows how to work hard and he knows how to reach a goal. And when the, there's so many levels of college basketball, right? And we're used to being here at Duke, you know, the, the pinnacle of college basketball. But there's Division Two, there's Division Three, there's junior college, there's NAIA, there's, there's so many places. There's high school, AAU, that people coach. And to see a coach that's worked his way up the rank and has arrived at Duke and totally has an appreciation for being here is a really cool thing. Coach Shire said he's also a Chicago native, so he's got another guy on the bench that can uh, back up Chicago and how great the Windy City is. <laughs> it felt kind of like Chicago outside today. First chilly day in a long time here in Dora, but the sun's going to come back out in the weekend, so it'll be all right. <laughs> That's exactly right. A couple of free throws for Gardner, who's had a nice night. The only Brave in double figures. He's got 14 points. Braves choose to extend their defense a tiny bit with a little one, two, two, three quarter court. Soft pressure. On the wing, power couldn't hit the three. Look at the hustle by Stewart to keep the possession alive. Now Jaden shoot. Defender goes by and he knocks down the triple. He is like loaded and ready to shoot as soon as he catches that ball. Another one for Jaden shoot. Boy, that was on the doorstep of the century mark. The freshman Jaden shoot averaged about seven minutes a game. You know he's going to be looking for a little more playing time this year. He's got a lot of talent in front of him. Worked really hard this summer, but you can see what a solid shooter he is. And a blocking foul underneath. We'll send Foster back to the line. 
Blakes with a nice kick out, little shot fake, sidestep by shoot. Defense flies by and he knocks down another three for the Blue Devils. 11 made threes for Duke tonight. Whew. They shoot like that every night, gonna be hard to beat. Got a lot of guys that can knock it down from behind the arc. First free throw wouldn't go. Stewart, another offensive rebound, and shoot, couldn't hit that one. Under five to go in Cameron. As the foul on Foster will be his third. And that'll probably be the end of the night for Foster, as Neil Begovic will check in for the first time tonight. Begovic, the transfer from Stanford. Played in 15 career games for the Cardinal. His brothers Daniel and Joseph played for Stanford as well. Brother Daniel in his second year as a graduate assistant for the Blue Devil program. All in the family. That's right. For the right hand, it's Carr again. He has four. I think when Coach Richards and his staff look at this film, they're going to see a lot of good things from their team. They certainly got a lot of fight in them. They don't quit. They've played every possession hard. They wanted them to come and compete, and I think mission accomplished. They also know this is going to be the toughest test they face all year long. Stewart blocked away. It was Fay again with a block. Now the Braves want to run. And a foul. The bucket goes for UNCP. It was Carr again who gets the hoop and the harm. And again, it's defense leading to offense here for the Braves. There's the block by Amadou Fay. That long wingspan and the basket attack by Juwan Carr and the finish. And he gets to go to the line for a three-point play. Carr, the second leading scorer from last season. Coming alive here in the second half. Missed the free throw. Jalen Blake's running the point now. Shows you the depth and versatility the Blue Devils have on this club. It's just a good opportunity to get players different min minutes at different positions. Still learning how to play together this early in the season with a nice tip in. Sean Stewart right there at the rim to finish it. Blue Devil is over 100 tonight. Deflected. It'll stay with UNCP when we come back. All Blue Devils tonight. The Blue Devils shooting over 50% from the field. They've held the Braves to 40% shooting. And Duke with a big lead at home. That's of the preseason for the Duke Blue Devils. And a chance for Duke to finish this preseason strong. A lot of good things for the Blue Devils tonight, Debbie. I think the fans uh, can see. Begovic oh. gets the block. And Stanley Borden, who also checked in, nearly got the loose ball. And there's a foul against the Blue Devils. Goes on and shoot his first. And with this 50-point cushion, this gives Coach Shire an opp opportunity to play some guys off the bench. You know, all these guys are working hard in practice every day, and when you get an opportunity to let them play out here in Cameron in front of the fans, it's a nice reward. Zy, uh, Zy McLean at the line. Red shirted last year for the Braves. A native of Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Shoot the rebound. And Spencer Hubbard with it for the Blue Devils. Hubbard is a fan favorite. Two-year walk-on. John Shire giving Hubbard a scholarship this year to show his appreciation for his hard work and dedication. TJ Power couldn't get it to go. If Spencer and Hubbard scores, this place is going to go crazy. <laughs> yes, it is. Amadou Faye called for his third foul. Power to the line. What a, 
What a great gesture, though, by Coach Shire. I mean, Spencer Hubbard started his career at Duke as a freshman as a manager, then a walk-on for two seasons, and Coach Shire awarding him a scholarship this season. And I, I just think it's such a tribute to Hubbard's commitment to Blue Devil basketball. Kind of an old school way of going about things. You don't hear those stories as much as maybe you did five, six years ago. This shows you what a, what a good guy John Shire is and how much he deep cares for his players and does the right thing. Hubbard guarding the ball well. A little bit of a mismatch there with Faye on the screen. Hubbard stays with him, nine to shoot. And a tough take and a good finish by Gardner. He did the best he can, a little height disadvantage there. Nice finish by Gardner. Stewart to shoot in the corner. And Faye with another block. Amadou and a little Faye. how do you do. Oh, he's just up. How do you do, Amadou? That's going to be such a weapon, though, for the Braves at the Division II level. He's a nice, look at the wingspan. I mean, he's just a really nice piece of the puzzle for Coach Richards. And how about this freshman, Dallas Gardner? He's got 16 points, four or five free throws tonight to lead all scorers for UNC Pembroke. This is power, but too strong. And the Braves trying to get back in transition. And a free throw is coming. Who else but Dallas Gardner? He got down the floor quickly, a little hang time. Released that shot at the right time and gets himself to the free throw line. He's 8 for 10 from the line tonight. And if you can play like this against the number two team in the country, should give Gardner a lot of confidence as they get into Division II play when they open the season later this week. Yeah, and this is a team, as we said, they were 26 and four last season. Returned eight players and has added have added a few really nice pieces: some length, some athleticism, a good shooter. The pre Ra ranked eighth in the preseason, yeah, yeah, I think exactly. they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. Won their conference last year. Begovic with it now. But I was trying to get it to Hubbard. Here's Stewart, pulls up from 15 and knocks it down. Little five out action by the Blue Devils. Somebody looking for a gap. And Sean Stewart continuing to add to his scoring tally. Final 100 seconds from Cameron. Bit of a push off there, that'll be goaltending. Basket will go as Stewart called for the goaltend. And Hubbard. Call for the foul. That's just one of those freshman uh, learning opportunities, let's say. Yes. And there will be things for the Blue Devils to dissect and correct after this game before they open the season Monday night at home against Dartmouth. Every game is an opportunity to learn, and a lot of guys got good minutes tonight. A little 2 2 1. It's designed to eat the clock a little bit. Blue Devils get into their offense. Second foul on Gray will send Hubbard to the line. What's your biggest takeaway tonight from a Duke perspective? Uh, obviously, we knew the outcome could get to this juncture with the Blue Devils. Certainly the more physical team, the, the Division One team against a Division II opponent. But what did John Shire learn? What's he going to take away from this game tonight? I think you see the unselfish play, but I think you see the maturity of McCain and Foster. You know, two freshmen that can really step right in and, and contribute in a big way right away. And you're adding that to the numerous returners. Jeremy Roach, who has great experience. What an experienced backcourt and a talented backcourt they're going to have. And you win with guards, as Coach Shire says. I mean, thank you, post players. <laughs> but without the guard, you're not going to get the ball. So guard play is key if you want to have a successful year. Stewart knocks down another one. That's great footwork right there by the freshman. Nice reverse pivot in the mid post. 10 of his 12 points coming in the second half for Stewart. Another double digit scorer for Duke. Final 15 seconds of the shot clock here is Faye, the up and under. And the put back there by Gardner. Debbie, if you've got one final thought to kind of encompass the whole game for both teams. What is it? I think both teams 
just competed, he competed well, played together. If you know, if I'm if I'm Coach Richards, I'm really proud of my team. I think Dallas Gardner, a freshman. I mean, you got a lot to be excited about. Amadou Faye and these new pieces you have, and Bear Mount. That's the three. Sorry. Oh, that's all right. That would have brought the house down. But a lot to like for both of these clubs, and a foul will be a block. Goes on Hubbard. Will be a second. Crowd doesn't like it. Free throws coming for Gardner. Right on cue, the freshman who's having a really nice night. Gardner with 20 points tonight. He's had a, he's had a super game, and that's just going to be one of the really positive takeaways from this experience. And uh, you know, Gardner down the road when he has children and grandchildren will be telling him how he dropped 20 in Cameron. <laughs> There are a lot of people that have come into this building and not been able to have the night he's had. Gardner with one more. Final 15 seconds. Gardner gets the offensive rebound. And the Braves can dribble it out if they want. Gardner on the kick. This is Gray, wouldn't go, and that will do it. The Blue Devils wrap up the preseason in great style. The Blue Devils place multiple players in double figures. They lead from the outset and never look back. A 109-64 win for John Shire and the Blue Devils. The number two ranked team in the country will begin their 119th season on Monday night. For Debbie Taylor, our producer, Will Black, and the rest of our great team, I'm Chris Edwards. Good night from Cameron, where the Blue Devils win it big at home.